Back in the late 1950s, there was a popular television series about a group of people traveling across the American West in a wagon train. Each episode brought its share of funny, shocking, and sad moments. If you're watching this video, stick around because there are some interesting facts coming your way. One thing that made the show special was how it depicted the challenges and triumphs of the pioneers. From facing natural disasters to encountering hostile Native American tribes, the characters navigated through a variety of obstacles. Now, let me ask you something. Is there a particular scene or moment in the show that has had a lasting impact on you? Maybe it's a memorable quote or a character's decision that stuck with you over the years. Speaking of characters, there were many memorable ones in the series. But out of all of them, which one was your favorite? Was it the fearless wagon master, the wise old cook, or perhaps the brave scout who always led the way? We'd love to hear your stories and memories about the show. So, if you have any special moments or personal experiences related to it, feel free to share them in the comments below. And remember, stay tuned for more interesting facts about the show in this video. Imagine exploring the vast landscapes of the Old West through the lens of a classic TV series from 1957. It's like stumbling upon hidden gems waiting to be uncovered. It all started with stumbling upon a particular episode and being drawn into its storyline and characters. Intrigued, a quest to discover more led to the treasure trove of this timeless show. Delving into each episode, currently navigating through Season 1, Episode 7, one is struck by the brilliance of this TV series. The simplicity of a wagon journey becomes a canvas for rich stories, unaffected by modern Western productions. In a world where the allure of the old days remains, this show stands out as a remarkable find. What sets it apart is not just its historical setting, but also the contrast it brings when compared to other series exploring different periods of history. The juxtaposition is fascinating, adding depth to the viewing experience. Kudos to YouTube for making the complete episodes accessible, allowing for savoring every moment of this captivating journey through the untamed West. In a media landscape dominated by the new and flashy, this show remains a testament to the timeless charm of classic storytelling. The characters, the settings, and the narratives blend seamlessly, creating an experience that transcends time. It's a reminder of the simple joy of discovering treasures in the vast expanse of television history. So here's to this show, a series that continues to captivate and resonate, proving that some stories etch themselves into the fabric of entertainment history. And with that, eagerly anticipate continuing the journey through the uncharted territories of the Old West, thanks to the brilliance of this classic TV series. Despite facing health challenges, the individual in question remained committed to their work, receiving support from their co-star. They continued contributing to the series with another actor who worked on multiple shows, also playing a significant role. The camaraderie among the cast members led to lasting connections and contributed to the show's popularity. Looking back, the success of the show reflects the collective effort of its cast members, showcasing their talent and dedication. In its first season, Charlie Wooster was known for his extensive medical knowledge, despite his unassuming appearance. Major Adams frequently praised him, saying, he may not look like much, but he knows a lot about doctoring. However, this aspect of Wooster's character faded away in subsequent seasons, and he displayed little to no medical expertise. Robert Horton won the role of Flint McAuliffe on the show, beating out John Smith. The character was based on the Gene Lebeck story. Interestingly, Horton, born on July 29, 1924, shared his birthday with his replacement, Robert Fuller, born on the same day in 1933. In the series, Chuck Wooster was alternately addressed as Charlie and Chuck, sometimes interchangeably in a single episode. Robert Horton collaborated with James Best on two different shows, including Wagon Train and The Barber Stanwyck Show. Ward Bond's last acting role was in the show's fourth season. He passed away from a heart attack during this time. The character he portrayed, Major Seth Adams, was not explained away on the show after his departure. In the world of classic television, there's a fascinating story behind the scenes of a popular show. One actor, Morgan Woodward, made quite a mark with numerous guest appearances. He holds a record for the highest number of guests starring roles on a certain TV series, while another actor, Robert Horton, had some interesting connections to both that show and another. Robert Horton rode the same horse and wore an identical gun belt in two different TV series. This practice mirrored what John Wayne did in some of his movies. Behind the scenes, though, there were tensions. Horton and another actor, Ward Bond, had a strained relationship on the set. Horton even claimed that Bond spread rumors about him. However, just before Bond's passing, the two men managed to reconcile their differences. 
the dynamics between the actors, and the shared elements in Horton's performances offer a glimpse into the workings of this classic TV series. Inspired by the film Wagon Master, the television series followed the journey of a group of families traveling by wagon train. Ward Bond, known for his role in the series, was set to meet Johnny Horton for a potential contract on the same day Horton passed away in a tragic accident. Despite popular belief, Bond, as the star, didn't influence casting decisions. Robert Fuller, who appeared in episodes of both Laramie and this series, also shared the screen with Dan Duryea. All these elements contributed to the legacy of the show. In the midst of the journey of a popular TV show, a key figure silently struggled. Unbeknownst to the public, this individual battled high blood pressure and declining health since the show's beginning. Despite medical advice to ease their workload, they persisted, adding to their challenges by consistently indulging in heavy drinking while on set. Amidst the ensemble of the TV show, another actor stood out, recognized for their portrayal of a significant character. Their role marked a pinnacle in their career, cementing their place in the public eye. During its inaugural season, the show found support from an unexpected sponsor, a division of a well-known automotive company. This backing added a unique aspect to the series, intertwining the narrative of the pioneering journey with the corporate presence of an automotive giant. Navigating the challenges of health, the prominence of characters like Denny Miller, and the unexpected sponsorship, the show's narrative unfolded against a backdrop of untold stories and uncharted territories. In the vast landscape of TV history, several actors and creators left a lasting impression on viewers. They were involved in a popular series which had connections to other well-known works. This series was envisioned by Gene Roddenberry, who saw it as a space-themed counterpart to another show. He aimed to blend genres and create something unique. Alongside him, Gene L. Kuhn played a vital role in shaping many episodes. Their contributions added depth to the show's legacy. Throughout the series, various actors, directors, and creators intersected, enriching its narrative. Ward Bond and his successor, John McIntyre, were notable figures appearing in movies by John Ford. Robert Fuller, another important figure, inspired aspiring actors like Nancy Stafford and Clarence Gilliard Jr. These connections highlight the show's influence across different generations and genres, leaving a lasting impact on television history. During his time on the series, Ward Bond, upon learning that Martin Lando was a Jewish actor from New York, intentionally struck Lando during a fight scene instead of simulating the punch. Robert Horton, another cast member, missed 20 episodes in his final season due to commitments in musical theater. Frank McGrath, who later became Horton's co-star on the show, initially served as his stuntman on other projects, including Pony Soldier and Apache War Smoke, during which Horton rode his own Appaloosa horse. This Appaloosa became a familiar sight during his time on the show. Bond's actions and Horton's theater commitments are noteworthy moments in the series' history. Robert Horton, the last original surviving cast member of the series after Terry Wilson's passing, held a unique place in the hearts of fans. Despite some mistaken assertions, Robert Fuller did not step in to replace him for the last two seasons, a fact often clarified by dedicated enthusiasts of the show. In the early days, a lone harmonica player graced the evening campfire scenes with a series theme song, lending a nostalgic ambience to the rugged frontier setting. However, as the show evolved, so did its musical identity, transitioning to a trail song with lyrics by the second season. This shift marked a subtle yet significant change in the show's atmosphere, reflecting the evolving narrative and character dynamics. The harmonica's absence was felt by some, while others embraced the new musical direction with open arms. Regardless of personal preferences, it was a testament to the show's adaptability and willingness to evolve with the times. These behind-the-scenes insights into the show's production and creative decisions offer a deeper appreciation for the timeless classic that continues to captivate audiences to this day. In the series, the portrayal of Charles Wooster's literacy varied. In one episode, Bill Hawks scolds Wooster for attempting to read despite being illiterate. However, in another episode, Wooster not only reads dialogue from Romeo and Juliet, but also shares a scrapbook he created with newspaper clippings on Nellie Jefferson's performances. Ward Bond's involvement in ultra-right-wing politics caused controversy in Hollywood, leading to a period where he struggled to find work. However, in 1957, at age 54, he made a significant comeback as Major Seth Adams, finally becoming a star in his own right. The theme for the series was adapted directly from Jerome Morris's score for the film The Jayhawkers, when Morris worked on Wagon Train as a composer for five episodes. This theme song is one of the most recognizable in American TV westerns. 
Three episodes from the series have fallen into the public domain, namely the Malachi Hobart story, the Dr. Denker story, and alias Bill Hawks. Robert Fuller collaborated with friends on other shows, including John Smith on Laramie, John McIntyre, and Denny Miller on this series, and Julie London, and Bobby Troop on Emergency. The series had hour-long black and white episodes for seasons one through six and season eight. Season seven episodes were in color and lasted 90 minutes. In syndication, season seven episodes were often aired alone on Saturdays, while the hour-long episodes aired on weekdays without season seven episodes. However, recent years have seen channels like Stars Encore Westerns and INSP airing season 7 episodes in sequence with the rest of the series on weekdays. Collaborations in the entertainment industry often deepen when actors have prior experience working together. This was the case for two notable actors, Robert Fuller and John McIntyre, who shared the screen in various TV shows. Their partnership blossomed further when they joined forces on a popular TV series, enhancing the appeal of the show to audiences. McIntyre's guest appearances on another series allowed him to establish a connection with Fuller, which seamlessly translated into their on-screen chemistry and their subsequent collaboration. Their shared history lent authenticity to their portrayals, contributing to the success of the series. During the filming of a popular TV show, a tragic incident occurred on set. An actor unexpectedly passed away before the completion of the season, leaving the cast and crew deeply saddened by the loss. Known for his role as Major Seth Adams, he was a beloved member of the team, and his absence affected everyone involved in the production. Despite the sorrow, the show continued to be successful, captivating audiences with its stories of frontier life and the journey of the wagon train. The remaining cast and crew had to navigate through the season without him, which was undoubtedly challenging. It's unfortunate that such a talented actor left us too soon, but his performances will always be remembered by fans. His impact on the show and the entertainment industry as a whole is undeniable. In a sad turn of events, one of the main actors from the 1957 TV series Wagon Train, Ward Bond, unexpectedly passed away during the production of the show's seventh season. This unfortunate incident deeply affected the cast and crew, leaving a significant impact on the storyline since his character, Major Seth Adams, played a central role in the series. Despite this setback, the show continued, showing resilience in the face of adversity. The remaining cast members, including Robert Horton and Frank McGrath, persevered, ensuring that the spirit of Wagon Train lived on. Bond's absence was keenly felt, but the dedication of the cast and crew kept the series moving forward, maintaining its popularity among audiences. His sudden passing serves as a poignant reminder of life's unpredictability and the profound impact one person can have on a beloved television series. Fans will always remember and appreciate his role in Wagon Train. The show's ongoing success is a testament to the commitment of everyone involved. Despite its popularity, the 1957 TV series faced constant challenges in maintaining a stable cast. Actors came and went throughout its run, often leaving abruptly due to contract disputes or creative differences. This turnover created a sense of instability behind the scenes, which contrasted sharply with the show's portrayal of camaraderie and perseverance on the wagon trail. As one of the longest running Western series of its time, it captured the imaginations of viewers with its episodic format and compelling storytelling. Set against the backdrop of the American frontier, the series followed a diverse group of travelers as they faced various challenges while journeying across the untamed wilderness. Each episode presented a new adventure, showcasing the characters' resilience and resourcefulness as they encountered dangers ranging from hostile Native American tribes to natural disasters. The heart of the show lay in its ensemble cast, led by the strong and stoic trailmaster played by Ward Bond in the early seasons. His commanding presence anchored the show, providing a sense of stability amid the ever-changing roster of characters. However, his sudden death in 1960 sent shockwaves through the cast and crew, marking a tragic loss for the series and its loyal audience. Despite the challenges it faced, the TV series remained a beloved fixture of television throughout its eight-season run. Its impact endures as a tribute to the enduring appeal of the Western genre and the timeless themes of adventure, camaraderie, and the pioneering spirit. Among the cast members of 1957 TV series Wagon Train, one tragic story stands out. Ward Bond, a prominent actor in the series, passed away suddenly during its run. Bond played the role of Major Seth Adams, the Wagon Master. His unexpected death deeply saddened the cast and crew, and his absence left a void in the series. 
Despite the loss, Wagon Train continued on, but Bond's departure marked a poignant moment in the show's history. In a surprising twist during the series, one of the main characters faced a sudden and sad fate, leaving viewers shocked and saddened by what happened. This unexpected event had a big effect on the storyline and how people felt about the show. Throughout the seasons, the series went deep into the personal ups and downs of its characters, showing viewers a close-up view of their lives and the challenges they faced while traveling across the frontier. The creators wanted to show how tough life was on the wagon train with all the dangers of the wild and the different relationships between the travelers. Even though the series was mainly about the journey of the wagon train, it also talked about important social issues of the time like racism, sexism, and how people treated each other based on their social class. Through its mix of characters and interesting stories, the series aimed to show what life was really like in the American West during the 1800s. As the series went on, it kept people interested with its good stories and characters, making it a favorite in TV history. The show's popularity has lasted a long time and has had a big influence inspiring future storytellers and becoming an important part of TV history.